Munich, Automatica in May 2012. The trade event where leading robotics experts from all over the world meet to discuss the future of the industry at the invitation of the International Federation of Robotics, IFR. And this year's show was full of smiling faces. Why? Because 2011 was the most successful year for industrial robotics since 1961. Today, uh, we have a lot of very good news about the international robotics industry for you. 2011 was the year of the fifth anniversary of the industrial robots, and it was by far the most successful year of industrial robots. Since the very first robotics installation back in 1961, more than 2.3 million robots have been sold throughout the world, with sales reaching 165,000 in the last year alone. And we are expecting in the next years, in these two uh, areas, the, the, the big result, the big result that we have already seen in other, in other countries. So, uh, good news from everywhere. We see the big growth also in the electrical. In these two segments, we must consider that we had an incredible growth due in the, uh, to, to, to the growth, sorry, <laughs> in the emerging countries. So we had an improvement in automotive, not only in, in, in Germany, not only in, 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 in Italy, in Americas, but also in emerging countries where robots are the tool to create, for example, cars. And experts say this trend is set to remain. The automotive industry will, will remain as the, uh, the biggest uh, end market uh, for robotics in the near, near future. <laughs> Even though we see the higher growth rates in the non-automotive business. For me, automotive industry is very important. Um, I think KUKA is number one worldwide in the automotive industry. And nevertheless, the key for KUKA for the future is general industry. The automotive industry has a really rich infrastructure to support robots. And when you move from automotive plants to a food plant, there's just there's nowhere near the same infrastructure. So robots need to be more intelligent, uh, easier to work with, more flexible, more dynamic. And, uh, you know, and those are reasons that those industries have not moved quite as quickly as the automotive industry has. What's the current status of cage-free robotics? We make mobile robots, you know, so when you make robots that, that are going to be moving around, then they almost by default have to be able to work with people because they're going to be encountering an environment where you're going to run into people. We have developed a lot, but we still see that the acceptance inside of the customer is still very slow because obviously the, the main drivers continues to be price, delivery and supply. In the, in the case we are Sky, we have no uh, real application. Two years ago we sat here and with everybody in the, autom the automotive industry was in a different situation back then. Um, and all of you look towards industrial general applications as being the growth industry. That really hasn't happened if you look at the figures here. They've grown but not as significantly as we expected two years ago. Um, what, where's the limitation? Why, ha why has it not occurred? So I think one of the, one of the challenges we as a robot manufacturer have is to make our uh, robots um, easier to use, to make them uh, simpler, uh, where you use more uh, intuitive programming tools uh, than we maybe have. We have to invest more in and bringing up our customers up the learning curve because for them the tool itself is very new. I think the tool itself is easy for use. Our engineers and the majority of our customers, existing customers, will consider it easy to use. It will become even more easier to use, supported by the technology which was just mentioned. But I think the key point, I fully agree there with Mr. Minami, is that we have to work much closer with our smaller customers in introducing the robot itself to them and bringing them up the learning curve. Looking at the statistics, according to IFR, China will be the biggest market in the year, two years at the most. Um, today, it's for, for all of you, it's a major market. What are the 
main differences in dealing with Chinese customers to dealing with uh, customers in Europe or in Japan or in the US? Uh, where, where are the differences today? So, uh, if we compare to the to Japanese customer and also Chinese customer, maybe we need more engineering power to support the uh, Chinese customer. I think Chinese customers have to, it has to be said they're great customers. They're very, very demanding, but also very rewarding. I think they they really uh, challenge us as uh, us suppliers uh, to to meet their requirements, which are very high, uh, legitimately high. Um, they are very demanding for the technology that they buy, and they pay on time. This, this is our experience. I think for us, uh, China is, is is good news because they're very reliable business partners. Just by those numbers itself, it says that uh, there has to be Chinese robot companies that will evolve out of those kind of numbers. I mean, it's just, there's just no way. And, and given the, the government's propensity to try and help industries along that they consider to be important, there's no doubt that over some period of time, I don't know if it's two years, if it's five years, but somewhere in the future, there will certainly be Chinese robot companies. So there was clearly plenty for experts and journalists to talk about in the meetings that followed. It's very interesting and a lot of subjects have been uh, deliberated today by the CEOs of the uh, robotics companies. Uh, though it used to be automotive uh, is one of the major industries, but uh, the other industry is also trying to use robotics as one of the major uh, uh, platform to bring solutions. And uh, this also improved the productivity of the manufacturing activities. Whichever way we see it, the future looks bright for robot manufacturers.